<laughs> well, they're starting to realize they were scammed. I've uh, been staying at my car or it's back from the case and they sold. Where the main cop that went to Dave was at Liberty House Sheriff CSC Bank. <coughs> uh, showed up at Altman Hospital when I got beat up and told the doctor he wouldn't talk to me about all these threats on my life and the doctor wouldn't let him talk to me because I got hurt real bad from Dave. And then I needed to go home and rest. Okay. Um, June of 19, Liberty House Sheriff from the North Canton Jackson Police. He's on the phone. He makes a mistake. He made up a case to watch her before. That's funny. Did what to her before? That's funny. She must really like him. Made up is fake. Fake is fraudulent. Fraud is a scam. They're scamming all these people. It's just a big scam. Police and agencies can only be in a home under threat of life. They have to speak to everyone in that home for initiating or it's abuse and misconduct and then failure to protect as abuse and misconduct goes into the right of privacy, illegal search and seizure. You don't get quarters to watch people. It's a special protective big cases only. Officers in uniform have verified it and it's on the Department of Justice. They can't be in your home no matter what. It's private property. Okay. This is just a big scam. They're trying to or <coughs> extort money under a scam, under fraud. It's fake. They're so stupid. They told people they photoshopped showers, you can guess. They have went to the camp police on them, investigators, uh, the drugs and told to say stuff, uh, the date rape drugs they were led. And some guy named Steve raped me before and human trafficking me under drugs so I wouldn't remember where I was already with Dave, I wouldn't know. And where I thought I was dreaming of waking up in a foggy haze, it was me being drugged of a man walking across my room and laying down next to me and holding me in his arms. It was Steve raping me. It's not funny to violate a woman on every level. I was found now <clears throat> in that tape I put up there. Yeah, right. <laughs> With the two Barry police reports, when I called the hall, and three witnesses are conspiring to kill me. Okay? Katie should have went to jail the first day. If I would have called the North Canton Jackson police, like the uh, ladies in, that went to work with Sarah wanted me to, she would have went to jail just for saying that to them. It's 10 years to life, conspiring to murder somebody. And then with the attempt to break in, making a mistake in front of the Perry police that um, they knew where the security system and he was a prime subject and said other stuff in front of the Perry police. Now saying his church was conspiring to murder me and then that other guy falling around to me <coughs> linked back to the church also. Um, I handed the FBI a case on a plan. Uh, yeah. And I, like I said, I talked to that lady for like 45 minutes. I already gave her all that stuff. They said they paid off, they made a deal with Will August uh, 10th or 11th, 22, inside Walmart 62. I walk in through the hair salon and they kind of start calling me saying it, that they called Will and explained Michelle and he set it up, no one to help me. It was a setup the whole time. Then I got to thinking. I tried to tell him about the guy threatening to knife me at Giant Eagle. And he interrupted me. I want a witness. They start getting rude with me. You don't get rude with witnesses. You let them cry, bubble everything out. Then you go pull the surveillance, get the witnesses around them, and then you go get them. Because in the middle of all that crying and bubbling, there's evidence. And he wouldn't hardly let me talk. That's why I only got the one ashamed guy out. Now, all that was already in the report from the hotline. He didn't need a witness. It was a son. I handed the FBI a case on a platter. And y'all right where I disappeared after I talked to him because they drugged me up with date rape drugs for two and a half days. That and I couldn't get out of bed. They didn't come looking for me. Yeah, right, they didn't find their dirty cameras. They should have arrested him one to five years. 
Yeah, right, they didn't find me drugged up in bed. Yeah, right, they didn't know that guy went to pay me before I called back. Yeah, right, they didn't know those men on the other side of the duplex had a copy of my phone. Yeah, right. It was a setup. Yeah, right. Okay? This does need to be made right. <clears throat> now, and this out here is just a scam. My one friend that used to work for a prosecutor, he said, you break it down in videos till it's basic. And it's exactly what they're doing. They're conspiring to commit extortion under fraud. It's a fake case to watch. They made a case. It's fraud. They're scamming these people and trying to scam me that they could extort money or they could get me in trouble for them coming up and saying, we put a shower scene in the other room. Well, we had bruises and we were date rape drugging you. We told you say this. We told you say that. Well, I did have bruises and I was really sick and loopy and date rape drugs aren't funny. You're sleepwalking. And I never talked to anybody. And trying to scam me that they could get me in trouble. They're scamming these people. I've never been questioned or wrongdoing. I've never been prosecuted and I've never been found guilty. They're just scamming people. Trying to extort money under a scam. But to cover his ass, that agent opened a state case and <clears throat> listed me informant put me in police protective custody and he intended to do nothing and just let me out there to die and then later on knowing there's a hit on my granddaughter's life and daughter-in-law's he still did okay this does make me afraid. you know when I made the comment about my father that choose your words carefully here my father ran he was the vice president of a robber company he traveled around the United States. He had business owners in his um, office all the time, and the factory was always calling. He was on the phone all the time. He had five children, and back then, children were to be seen and not heard. Okay? So while he's busy on different phone calls, this, that, you come up and say, hey, Dad. It's just the facts. What do you need? Okay? And that's all he wanted was just the facts. He had five kids. And he's got phone calls. He's got the factory calling, even in the middle of the night. Okay? So, it was just the facts of what you need. Someone described my father as a kind hearted man. I thought that was perfect. He was the kind of man at five years old, took you out to a public swimming pool, made you learn how to swim, definitely made sure you can't feel tired enough, you can't swim, you gotta learn how to float. And uh, then taught you how to swim, then took you canoeing and said, do you remember how to swim? And then turned the boat over. But he looked at me and one day and said, you'll never drown. Okay? He was a weird, hard man, but then families that were in need, he would be overly generous. He was a hard, kind man, and he was very hard on his children, but he had a big, he had a business to run, and it was consuming him, and he went to college on top of it, way up into his 50s. He started off, like I said, he his brother had got killed during uh, surgery, and the surgeon back in the 50s made a mistake when he took his tonsils out and cut his throat. And his mother had lost it for a while, and he went and lived with an aunt that made him live in a garage and pay rent for that garage. He lived in the cold when he was 17. He had to go out and get a part-time job. He had to finish high school. He met my mom. They got married right after high school. He put, started putting us out through college. They started having kids right away. And he had three jobs to support us and to go to college. And then started off as a chemist and then worked up to a GM and then to a vice president and never stopped. He worked for everything I've changed in life, but he was busy. And he was always busy. And like I said, 
that's why when you walk in his office, you just stood there. It was like, if he wasn't on the phone, it's like, hi, Dad, and you just stood there. Because it was a busy office, and you didn't know what business owner would walk in or call. It wasn't a play place. Taught that very young. And that's okay, because business is business, and taught that at a young age. Grew up around it. It is what it is. But like I said, families and needs, way back in the 70s, he was extremely generous. Always was. Children don't come with empathy. They don't know right from wrong. You have to teach it to them. His mama. You have to teach people to be kind. And he did. But I'll tell you what, these people, they were fooling these people with a scam. I was talking to my one friend that used to work in the prosecutor's office. He said, you take your videos, you break it down to basic of what's going on here. It is, is they're trying to extort money under fraud. Fraud is a scam and they're scamming these people that I have charges. You can't have charges if you've never been questioned or wrongdoing, never stood in front of a sitting judge to get charges and then never prosecuted to make sure if they stayed. Nothing happened, because they made it off. It's a fraud, it's a scam. Only thing they did is break in my door after he met Michelle. Started stalking me, date rape, drugging me, apparently photoshopping me, I heard. And think it's funny, they fool all these people under scams to harass me. When in the meantime, Dave's tried to kill me and my middle son's family. He may have killed up there. Beat me with internal injuries, sexually assaulted me. Hmm? The minute he hired the stalkers. And where his one uh, lady from his church, Katie, was pregnant that her church was gonna have me murdered in front of three people. If you say that to somebody that you're conspiring to commit murder, it's 10 years to life. Nobody went to jail except for the stalkers that were coming at me. And during the protective light case, like I said, my one ex daughter in law was friends with that Michelle and I they, she needs to just look at him and say, you know what? I was just showing off, like I said. Her one of her little bitchy friends was in Dollar General when the little kids two of the little kids are like, Should we see him here? So no. Ken and Mom said they already found out all the kids made everything up and there's no reason to. And they turn around and look at me and said, but those bastards raped her. Right at the register. I would have been horrified if my children made fun of a rape victim. I would have said, ma'am, I'm sorry, and everybody out to the car. And I would have spanked them. You have to cheat your children right from wrong. You don't make fun of it then. And you don't try to scam and extort money out of people making stuff up and that were caught by the police. One of the main investigators or officers, his name I guess was John, a young guy with black hair. They would walk in, the guys around me, John's here to take care of Karen. It was his turn. I look over and he yells, I'm really great now. <laughs> Like it's ridiculous for any child to be afraid of parents. There's nothing we're gonna love. <clears throat> and where I stopped talking to everybody, alone in my car, my apartment, I did for like four days. And then I started again, because my brother-in-law created a spy room. He worked for the government, okay? years ago. Um, I know what I'm doing. Um, I started doing it again. He came in, he walked off, he yelled out, I knew you couldn't resist us. The other, and he said, I, the other guy's like, yeah, I know. He's like, it's great having an informant that talks to us. And he yelled out, well, this case has been out in public, hot and messy. Because some of these crap people sold the login to where only police and investigators and security that was hired should hear me. And they're not in trouble for buying it. They sold it. They were talking about Walmart for Christmas 18. They were selling it for $25 a pop. 
watched all the horror that was done to me, like a reality show. None of this is fun. And they're scamming these people, scamming them, into helping make fun of their victims. They should be ashamed of themselves. And where they scam me out some money, and I went and reported it, and trying to get it back from the bank, I went into the bank, they said, there's four more reports of other people being scammed in this area just today. Well, they said May 5th, at Dr. Tater's office this year. That's the one we used as an example to process people. Now we'll process more. They were gonna start scamming, drugging, raping, and exploiting people. Well, people make fun of me for being their victim. They're gonna victimize them. Why would they just stop with me? Hmm? Why? Hmm? Like I said, my one next daughter in law, she was just friends with Auntie Show. And she better stick with that story. Because the police already caught her telling the kids to lie. And the kids saying uh, he was the one, uh, January 12, 22, at Walgreens, North Main, that met the goons at the door. What those kids get caught saying? They made everything up. They're documenting the games every time. And that earlier that day, that, that they wanted Auntie Show and Papa to get the house and I didn't need to get out. They're just mean games to pretend. And, you know, some of the investigators are like, why are they having those kids make up that stuff up? Because everybody's walking around everybody. Our house is gone. Hmm? And they're following them around. Hmm? They're documenting me games to pretend like Forrest said. My other granddaughter ran them out. Of course, it never happened. Of course, it wasn't her. We made it all up. It's games to pretend. Laughing, she was seven. And mass and police will tell you they're documenting me games have done. And the rest of my family spoke highly of me in 18. It was never my integrity that was a question. It was like they told Dave, March 1st of 15 and 19, it's just a real life case of how to get away with murder. They're just murdering people in front of people while they pay them to mock them. That's it. They extort money out of them. Hmm? and then pay low lies to make fun of them. Shame on all of them. Absolutely shame on all of them. Shame on all of them. Okay? Shame on them. Falling for fraud. They even told them it was a made up case. They told them on everybody that drug mobbed me and told me to say stuff. They told them I'd never been questioned. They told everybody to frame me. They told everybody it was a shower scene. They told on everybody. That's like I got the stupidest criminals. And they weren't allowed in my house in the first place. And they just keep telling on each other what they did to me. Huh? And I had bruises and hand marks and got sick and dizzy after an and hours passed. It's not funny. And I never questioned anybody. I mean, I've never been questioned by anybody. And if you go into Portage County Courthouse Records, it's just my divorce. They made the whole thing up. It is. It's just a big scam. A big scam. My whole family was interviewed, spoke very highly of me. They should. I almost died to save them. If they, those guys actually knew what their father did and what those people did, and I lived through it to save their lives, it'd bring my boys to tears. Maybe one day they should find out. A great sacrifice should never be unnoticed. One of my grandson's teachers, he got in the car and she looked over at me with a little lady and she said, no, everybody knows what's going on but her family. They don't. So these people need to stop falling for fraud and scams.